Hi everyone, Johnny here. So it's been a while since I've actually put out a martial arts film study. I've been a bit busy with the things that were going on in my life, but managed to uh, get through the federal election here in Australia. And so I've been back at it, catching up on all the fights. The first fight that I actually wanted to study is the Rod Tang versus Jacob Smith fight. So when I was watching this fight, the thing that stood out for me was in the long guard. So Jacob likes to use the long guard with the right hand tucked against his face but with the left hand out extended, that actually raises an interesting battleground because I went back and watched some of his previous fights on the Yukao cards. And you can see Jacob's actually got a, a phenomenal long guard game. From the initial stages early in round one, Jacob was looking to establish that long guard to maintain his distance and take some of the edge off of Rod Tang's power. The key things about the long guard, the elite hand extended, which is creating a frame and also a, an element of control. If that hand is in the face, then obviously it can also serve to obstruct the opponent's vision but it's there to maintain distance. The secondary aspect of extended arm is that it can then stifle the opponent's attack. So when there are attacks coming by directing the arm up or down, you might be able to stifle some of those blows that are coming over the top or below the lead hand. And then he keeps his shoulder tucked against his chin and that actually protects the lead side of his face. And he's got his rear hand tight, which then covers the other side of his face. So it actually serves a really strong defensive structure. Now, why I think this was such a great battleground in the fight is because you can actually see Rod Tang progressively pick apart the long guard and he gives you some great options when it comes to countering the long guard. Let's take a look at a few of these options. In the first examples, Rod Tang outranges the long guard with the teep, disrupting Smith and forcing him to reset. The long guard's strength is concentrated at the hand, much like the tip of a spear, so if you can be on either side of the spear, you have a greater opportunity to counter. In these next examples I've clipped up, Rod Tang opts to sit on the outside of Smith's lead hand, utilising his own rear hand to either turn Smith away or alternatively to draw the hand down to fire his own rear elbow over the top. By occupying the space to the outside of the lead hand, Smith would need to draw his hand back to re-establish the long guard and Rod Tang punishes this before exiting the exchange. In this next sequence, Rod Tang anticipates the long guard and traps over the top landing an elbow before using his physical controls to prevent the long guard getting established and forcing a reset. Here is one more example of countering the long guard from outside the opponent's lead arm, this time without the hand controls but instead utilising footwork to take the outside position and throw the rear cross over the top of the long guard. A second method Rod Tang would use to counter the long guard would be by moving towards the inside of Smith's extended arm. Although the initial shot is the right hand coming over the top of the long guard, Rod Tang's intention of moving towards the inside is firmly established as he releases the left body shot. Note how Smith's lead hand is bent at the elbow to try and keep the hand in front of Rod Tang's face. If the arm remained fully extended, Rod Tang would likely have bypassed the lead arm on the inside, opening up further offensive options. One last way Rod Tang would dismantle the long guard on the inside was through the lead up elbow to split the guard. In this last section of the study, I thought to show examples of Rod Tang utilising the strategies we've covered in combination to attack both on the inside and the outside of the long guard. Pay attention to his beautiful hand trapping sequences and how he mixes attacks on the outside and inside to make it difficult for Smith to adjust his defensive structure accordingly. If you can compromise the defensive structure of the long guard, you reduce its effectiveness to stifle shots and effectively defend. There are so many other sequences I haven't covered, so if you haven't watched the entire fight, don't forget to do so. I hope you've enjoyed this study on the long guard and if you'd like to follow me as I continue to work on my film study skills, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.